Natalie, you are a housewife and the eldest son's wife. It's only natural that you should take care of your brother-in-law. You definitely can do it, right? Huh? Why are you talking about that out of the blue? I've been taking care of a 38 years old jobless son for a year. Oh, I see. It must have been tough for you. Next time, you're the one who's going to take care of that boy. I beg your pardon? Are you telling me that he'll move in with us? Yes, that's what I've been telling you since a while ago. I thought you understood about that. Morel, please don't get so excited. First, I have to talk to my husband, Felix. Have you told him? Why do I have to call Felix? I'm sure he'll understand if I tell you, won't he? Don't be so silly and just let his younger brother Derek move in with you quickly. I heard that Derek is suffering from depression, isn't he? So what? Is that a problem? If that's the case, it's even more difficult to take care of him at our house. You are just a housewife, so you have plenty of time. All you have to do is take care of him. I have two sons who are still in middle school. I don't want to take on the responsibility of taking care of Derek without thinking. Please give me some time to consider. You and Felix have been forcing me to take care of Derek until now. This time, it's your turn to take care of him. He's your son, isn't he? Besides, you told us that you just want us to help him financially. That's why we've been sending money to you every month. Even if you gave me money, it wouldn't heal my heartache. You're a stupid wife if you can't even realize that. You should have known a little better. I understand that you've been through a hard time with Derek. Then why don't we have a family meeting? We don't know how much assistance Derek needs. I don't think we should take on a case when we don't know anything about his current health condition. He's a 38 years old shut-in, but he can talk. You can have a discussion with Felix about that because I don't want to get involved. How irresponsible. Anyway, how long has he been taking his medications? I don't know anything about that. In my opinion, depression is just an indulgence. You don't need any treatment for that. You're wrong, Morel. Depression is a mental illness. Without proper treatment, it can lead to the worst case scenario. Please don't be too harsh on Derek. You're so annoying. I was just trying to tell you the truth. Derek is too old to get married, so that's why he's taking advantage of me by pretending to be sick. I regret that. I gave birth to a worthless son like him. Please don't say that. Derek is your own son. Anyway, it's been decided that you and Felix are going to take care of Derek. I'm counting on both of you. Hold on a sec. You can't just decide like that. I could have kicked him out of my house right away, but I held out for a year. I've done my job as a mother. Derek is your family too, so you better do your duty together with Felix. Oh dear. My name is Natalie, and I am a 42 years old housewife. I've been married for 20 years to my husband Felix, who is the same age as me, and we have two kids in middle school. I spend every day in a flurry of activities while raising your two children. My father-in-law passed away a few years ago. Felix's brother Derek has never lived alone. He still lives with his 67 years old mother at home. I heard that he is a shut-in. To be honest, I was surprised at the sudden allegation from Morel. But I thought it would not be good to ignore Derek since he's suffering from depression. I hurriedly talked to my husband about it. We were discussing about what we should do next time. Two days later, something unexpected arrived at our house. Morale? Looks like Derek's personal belongings were sent to our house, and we had to pay for the delivery cost too. I'm glad it arrived safely. He doesn't have much stuff, so I didn't hire the movers. I sent it to you by courier, so please pay the delivery cost. Me and Felix haven't decided whether we will take care of Derek or not. We are still discussing about the plan, so nothing has been decided yet. I've been waiting for some days, but you didn't reply to me. That's why I just decided to have Derek's stuff delivered to your house. It's only been two days since the last time you called. 
We can't come to a conclusion so soon. Two days is more than enough to have a discussion and decide something. It's impossible. We need to do some preparations in advance. I'm busy with the sale of my house and other things. I don't want to wait any longer. Just take care of Derek, okay? I'm counting on you guys. You're selling the house? I didn't know that. We seriously need to think about the preparations. Have you told Felix? Of course not. I inherited the house, so I'm the owner. Why should I tell Felix that I've decided to sell the house? Selling a house is an important matter. I think it's better to discuss such things beforehand. We are family after all. I have my own reasons, so stop bothering me. Is something wrong? Feel free to talk to me if you want to. Actually, I'm going to start investing. Isn't that great? Investment? That's quite a sudden announcement. Why did you suddenly decide that? I became friends with an investor at a coffee shop I often visit. Did that person encourage you to start investing? Yes, that's right. He's a very kind person. I learned a lot about investing from him. He told me that I'm talented. That's when I decided to become a devoted investor. What? Isn't that suspicious? That's not true. Don't talk nonsense. He actually earns more than a thousand dollars every month and has a house overseas. Besides, he even showed me pictures of his mansion, so he's definitely a millionaire. Honestly, I find that a little hard to believe. I mean, it's just too suspicious. But what does that have to do with selling the house? I need more money to fund my investments because the inheritance from my husband has run out. Derek's savings are gone and he's unemployed. The only way to make money was to sell the house. I'm going to use a lot of money for this investment. Wait a minute, did you use Derek's savings? He lost his income when he became unemployed, right? Of course I used it. Are you kidding me? What are you going to do from now on? If you sell the house, you won't have a place to live. How are you going to live? That person also owns an apartment building. I heard he has a spare room, so that's where I'm going to live. Living in a huge apartment was my dream. And it has come true. Geez, there are so many things I want to complain about. Can you hold the house sale for now? Why? It's my house. Besides, it's my life, so let me do what I want. It's none of your business. I understand what you're saying, but you're making too many arbitrary decisions. For example, is Derek's luggages. I don't think it's right for you to send them to me without discussing in advance. Isn't that too insane? I've been taking care of a middle-aged shut-in for a year, remember? Don't you think it's about time for me to be free? I wonder why you have no compassion for me. But before Derek became depressed, he was working and he also paid for your expenses, right? Why don't you take good care of Derek this time? It is a filial pity for a child to take care of his parents. On the contrary, Derek was depending on me since he became a shut-in. It's unacceptable. Why don't we get together and have a family meeting? We don't want the burden to fall solely on you, Morel. I'm worried about your house too. I think this is a problem that we all need to think about and solve together. I want to be a full-fledged investor as soon as possible. I even borrowed money to achieve that goal. I can't just sit around and do nothing because I have to pay it back, right? Seriously? I can't believe you did that. I borrowed some money so that I can start investing. How much? About $10,000. Really? That's a lot of money. If you start investing seriously, you can pay this back in no time. That's not true. Let's discuss this as soon as possible. If we don't, we'll be in trouble. You're overreacting. If I don't become an investor in the first place, you'll be in trouble too. Why do you think so? Because you're the guarantor for the debt. Huh? I don't remember giving you any permission to turn me as your guarantor. I filled out the form myself. I prepared everything perfectly. I'm really a smart woman, don't you think so? I don't think you're allowed to do such thing. I did it anyway. Amazing, isn't it? I don't think so. Anyway, if you stop me from becoming an investor, I'll never be able to repay my debt. 
As my guarantor, you will be in trouble, right? Using someone's name without permission is a crime. You will get arrested. Even if you say such a thing now, it's too late. I can't change the fact that you are my guarantor. That's too selfish. If you have time to complain, why don't you shut up and take care of Derek? Well then, goodbye. Natalie, things have changed. Leave that middle age shut in alone and take care of me from today. Hello, Morel. It's been a month since the last time we spoke. I'll be living with you guys from now on, so please keep that in mind. I don't like it when you say that so suddenly. You always decide things so sudden. We're family. There's nothing wrong with that. You must take good care of your mother-in-law. Stop kidding me. We don't have enough capacity to take care of you. What are you talking about? You're my son's wife. So it's only natural that you should take care of his brother too. I'm better than Derek, right? If it's too hard for you guys to take care of him, then just abandon him right away. It's better than taking care of an old lady like you. What did you say? How dare you talk to me like that? I'm sorry, I was just being honest. You're a terrible daughter-in-law. I was just trying to tell you the fact. It can't be helped, right? What are you talking about? Derek is a 38 years old middle-aged shut-in who doesn't work and stays at home all the time. It's much better for you to take care of me instead. For your information, Derek is working. What? He doesn't live together with me and Felix at our house. He lives alone now. There's no need for me and Felix to take care of him. You must be kidding. That's not what I heard. I haven't heard anything from you since the last time we talked, so it's natural that you didn't know. Explain to me what on earth is going on. First of all, Derek has ADHD. What language is that? Don't use abbreviations. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It's a disease caused by an inborn error in brain development. Don't say random things. When I gave birth to him, the doctor never mentioned anything like that to me. When Derek was born, ADHD wasn't a common thing, so I think he wasn't diagnosed properly. And why now? Derek is already 38 years old. I had to learn more about Derek's depression, so we went to the hospital together. At that time, they recommended an examination. As a result, he was diagnosed with ADHD. So what? The cause of his depression was ADHD. I don't get it. ADHD causes a lot of common mistakes at work, interpersonal problems, and so on. In addition, you treated him so badly that he was stressed out and ended up with depression. Hold it right there. You make it sound like it's all my fault. I'm not the one who should be blamed here. You kept calling Derek a failure and told him every day that he couldn't do anything by himself, didn't you? I was just trying to be honest with him. But because of that, he couldn't decide to live alone and ended up living together with you. I also heard that you took all of his salary. I lose my mind too if I had to live like that. I feel sorry for Derek. I was using his salary to pay for our living expenses. It's obvious, isn't it? I let him live in my house and I fed him too. You only gave him bread and water every day. But you went to eat out a restaurant with Derek's money most of the time. Isn't that too much? That's not true. If he didn't like to eat only bread, he should have cooked by himself. You didn't allow him to do that, did you? You told him that he would make the kitchen dirty so he obeyed your order. Because I'm the one who cleans the kitchen all the time. I heard that you outsourced all of the house chores. That's very elegant. Did Derek tell you that? You hired a housekeeper using your allowance, didn't you? You're not a queen who lives in a castle, Morel. That's fine, since I don't hire the housekeeper every day. I don't think so. Derek told me that the housekeeper was there every single day. Really? I don't think so. I'm having a difficulty remembering things. Derek confirmed the housekeeper's name from the service provider. We were also able to check the frequency. If your memory is not clear, I can check it out for you. Why did you do that? You guys are so insidious. In the first place, it was Derek who made the decision of giving all his salary to me and live together with me. If you have a problem with that, 
You should talk to Derek, not me. He wasn't performing well at work, and he was also blamed by you at home. I don't think he was in a normal state of mind. That's why. He couldn't think of any other way but to obey you. If that's the case, how did he get back into the workforce? There's no way a company would hire a 38 years old sick man. Derek originally had a second job. You didn't know about that? Are you telling me that he has a side job? All of his salary was taken by you, so he's been working at home for some time to earn money. There's no way he can get a good job. A side job doesn't pay that much. Anyways, Derek was studying computer programming in college, wasn't he? What's that? Derek told me that he had told you about what he learned at college. You don't remember anything about that? I wasn't interested, so I don't remember. He's your own son. I can't believe you don't know anything about him. Shut up. I have no idea about what computer programming is. Explain to me. It's something you do when you want to create games, apps, websites, and so on. Is he capable of doing that? He always liked working with computers. He said it didn't bother him when he came home from work and did his side jobs. Seems that it's fun for him. I see, so that's why he had savings. As I recall, you entered Derek's room without permission. You took his bank book, didn't you? That's because I thought he was saving for our living expenses. I think that was the money he earned from his side jobs. Then why did he run out of money? If he was earning money, he should have money deposited regularly. Isn't that strange? Stop talking nonsense. Since he was suffering from depression, he didn't even have the energy to do things he liked to do. It's obvious, isn't it? I kicked him out of my house because I thought that all of his savings were gone. If he could start working again, I shouldn't have let him left the house. Since Derek is free from your abuse, he has turned his side job into his main job and is currently living a decent life on his own. He seems to be earning more money than before. I'll take care of Derek then. What? Isn't it hard to take care of a sick person? I will take care of him from now on and I'll live on his earnings too. What are you saying out of the blue? You don't have to do anything, Morel. But Derek lives alone, right? I'm worried about him. He's a 38 years old. I'm sure it's not convenient for him to do everything by himself. I'll take care of his house chores. No way. By the way, we have moved out from our former house. So we are living next to Derek. We don't need your help. We can handle everything by ourselves. Moved out? What do you mean? We moved to an apartment where we can live next door to each other. Now I work with Felix to check on Derek. We have a good relationship with each other and sometimes we go out together. We're having a great time. Then I'll live there too. Give me the address. That's enough, you parasitic old hag. How dare you say that? You kicked Derek out of your house. Do you know where he was found? I told him to go to your house. He was near the mountain. Why did he go to such a place? He was sick after all, wasn't he? He was planning to end his life there. Huh? He didn't want to bother anyone anymore, so he came up with that idea. But someone who happened to be near the mountain helped him. The worst case scenario was averted. I can't believe that really happened. It's my fault for not realizing it before it happened. But you were the one who drove him to that point. Tell me how you feel, Morel. Depression is not a disease. I also took Derek's salary because I thought that it's a filial pity from him. I just did what was natural. Filial pity is something that children do willingly, not something that parent forces upon them. Wait a minute, I apologize for what happened. So will you let bygones be bygones and help me? You were planning to become a successful investor, right? Why do you need help? You're much richer than us anyway. That guy left me. Are you talking about the person who introduced you to investment? Is that why you're contacting me now? He took the money from my house and ran away. I went to the apartment I was going to live in today and found it empty. What should I do now? I knew it was a scam. It was just too good to be true. What should I do? I even have debts. 
You are the guarantor, right? You should be the one to pay it. It wasn't my will. You used my name without my permission, so it's not valid. If you don't help me, you'll be in trouble too. Okay? If I help you, will you pay off your debt? I'll do all the housework and take care of Derek too, of course. Then you will have more time to spare, won't you? You can even work and pay off your debts easily. Isn't that good? Are you ordering me to pay off your debts? I put your name on the document. There's nothing you can do to change it. So help me quickly. Running away won't help at all. It's easy to prove forgery of a guarantor by handwriting analysis. What? I won't let you get away easily, Morrell. I don't understand. Even if the demand of the debt repayment comes to us from the finance company, we just have to tell them that my name was used without permission, because you forged the document. Are you saying that it's impossible for you to take over my debts? Yes, that's right. Why should I take over your debt? Then at least let me live in your apartment. If you don't want me to live with you, find an empty room somewhere and rent it for me. Please stop being selfish. You need to face the reality. Are you abandoning your mother-in-law? What a cruel woman you are! I won't help you no matter what you say. I've already sold the house and have nowhere to live. I don't have any working experience too. Then I have a job for you. I heard you can work as a janitor at a hotel and live in the dormitory. A janitor? Me? Dormitory? If you don't like it, it's fine. You'll just be homeless. That's disgusting. Then what do you want to do? If you want work, I can send you the URL of the job site. Please do so then. Got it. You need to work hard to pay off your debt. Goodbye. After that, my mother-in-law started working as a live-in part-timer janitor at a hotel. As for the scam, I reported it to the police, but the money was never returned. I think Morel deserved that. Then I heard that she started to suffer from depression because she could not endure the unaccustomed work and life in extreme poverty. Unfortunately, she has no money for treatment. She's struggling to make ends meet. It can't be helped since she was the one who created the trouble. On the other hand, Derek is finally free from his mother. His stress has also decreased. He is now able to lead a normal life while devoting himself to his favorite work. He is stepping into a brighter future one step at a time. Recently, he has even started to smile again. The relationship with her family is also good. Although I was surprised at my mother-in-law's selfish demands, we are now living a peaceful life. I'm so relieved. Susan, I have something to ask. Good morning, Diane. Can I help you with anything? About the dinner last night. I believe you were not invited. How come you were there? Um, David invited me. I planned that dinner party. I did not invite you. Why did you come to the dinner uninvited? People with common sense would certainly not show up to a party uninvited. I'm sorry. It's been six months since you and David got married. I've asked you before not to attend a party, haven't I? I believe I'm part of the family now that David and I are married. <laughs> but we're not blood relatives. That should mean Steve, the husband of your daughter, can't attend the dinner either. But I saw him at the dinner last night. He is an exception. They have children now, so I consider him a family member. You haven't carried out your responsibility as a family member yet. You don't have a child. I'm sorry, but I can't accept you as a family member yet. Will you accept me as a family member once I have a child? That's not the only condition. Steve also makes a decent income. Most of all, his education and career bear comparison with those of our families. But your background is a little different, you see. Because I didn't go to college. To put it simply, yes. There are more reasons, like the fact that you were raised by a single mother and you're not well educated. 
Even the restaurants I choose are too high-end for you. You should never come to dinners again. You don't know table manners. <laughs> I've learned table manners since I became an adult. I will have no problem. Oh, please. You think you're one of us now just because you've learned some table manners? This is why I don't get along with uneducated people. You may have no problem, but I do. Did I misbehave at the dinner? I wouldn't know. I didn't pay so much attention to you. Anyway, don't ruin our precious family time. David has told you not to do that. Not to leave me out of the family. You apologized to me before. I only apologized out of regard for my son. Are you going to tell on me again? That kind of behavior shows your lack of dignity. I've never told on you. David just noticed. Oh, did he? I hope I won't get an angry call from him blaming me. Listen, Susan. I'm telling you this for your own sake. Um, for my sake? You know, you should know your place. I don't invite you to a dinner because you would feel miserable being somewhere you don't belong. I never felt miserable. Everyone has been kind to me, including David, Catherine, and Steve. I always look forward to seeing everyone. They're way too kind. Don't take advantage of their kindness. I wanted my son to have a well-bred, educated wife. It upsets me that in reality, someone like you is at dinner with us instead. I'm sorry. I'll do my best to gain your approval. That will never happen. If you understood me, don't ever come to the dinner again. I understand. Make up some reason not to come to the dinner when David invites you next time. He won't treat you as well as he does now when you get old. He will dump you when you get old. You will die lonely and miserable. <laughs> Susan, did you receive the package of cheese I sent you? Yes, I've just received it. Thank you for such an excellent selection of cheese. I hope you know. I know. Everything you send to our house is for David. Exactly. Those aren't gifts for you. It's good to know you've learned to behave with a little modesty. It's written on the delivery slip for David. I wouldn't eat them without permission. I guess reading is the only thing you can do. <laughs> you never remember what I say. I'm sorry. Speaking of which, we are going on a family trip for New Year's. We're staying in the luxury hotel for three nights. <laughs> yes, David told me. I was glad to know I'm allowed to join the trip. Thank you for your permission. What? You're going to babysit Catherine's children. Excuse me? The place we're going to stay is a luxury, non-child-friendly hotel. Make sure to take good care of them. Am I staying home? Obviously. Who do you think is going to pay for the trip? I know David wants to take you with him. But I won't allow him this time. Don't even try to come with us. I don't want to see your stupid face at the start of a new year. I understand. Good. We never had this conversation, got it? You tell on me, and you will put our family's relationship in jeopardy. David will inherit my property someday. Your behavior can change my mind about it. Yes, I will keep that in mind. If my husband were still alive, he wouldn't approve of you either. You should thank me for allowing you to marry my son. Yes. People who grew up in single-parent families are so impudent. It's disgusting. Our family comes from a long line of wealthy landowners. We've always married someone from a good family. David was supposed to marry the daughter of the doctor who lives in Texas. Then you came out of nowhere. But we love each other. We're happy to have each other. Ugh, how cheesy. 
Don't talk to me like we're equals just because you married a rich man. With all due respect, he's just an ordinary businessman. He comes from a wealthy family. That's the reason you married him in the first place. Why are you bringing this up now? I don't care if he's wealthy or comes from a good family. Yeah, right. Just don't come on the trip with us. That's all I care about. You can't go on a trip when you have children to babysit. <laughs> Think over what I told you. Know your place and stay humble like the peasant that you are. It's such great weather today, Susan. It really is. Isn't it such a perfect day to go on a trip? It sure is. Oh, right, you're staying home. Well, you shouldn't complain. Babysitting is the only thing you can do to make yourself useful. We'll enjoy our family trip. What a coincidence. I'm on a trip with my family, too. Huh? You're on a trip? With your family? Are you traveling with your mother? Did you take Catherine's children with you? My mother is here, along with David, Catherine, and Steve. We've been having a great time at the hotel since yesterday. David and Catherine are there? You're kidding, right? You're bluffing. You want to go on a trip so badly that you would lie to me? <laughs> We're actually here. I'm sorry, Diane. What? I've known for a week now that nobody was going on a trip with you. Nobody will come to the airport to meet you. I feel bad. That can't be true. There's no way Catherine stood me up. She says she would never go on a trip leaving her children behind. I planned this whole trip for her. I was going to help her refresh herself. Even so, she didn't want to make me babysit her children. Catherine is really warm-hearted, isn't she? David agrees with her. He said he's always been against leaving me out of the family. But they were excited for the trip. I know, they tricked you into believing so. Are they really not coming? No, we're too far away from the airport. Enjoy your trip alone. It really is a great day to go on a trip. Shut it! Where is everyone? I can't tell you that. Are you actually telling me to spend your year's holiday alone? I booked an expensive hotel. Don't mess with me. Are you trying to embarrass me? We came to an agreement that we don't care about you or what will happen to you. Susan! Did you agree on that too? Yes. You're my daughter-in-law. You're supposed to listen to everything I say. Think about the way you've treated me. How can you think I would listen to what you say? I've been strict with you because David will be the head of the family someday. You need to behave properly as a wife of the head of the family. Otherwise, you will bring disgrace on your family. I play the bad guy for you. I'm sure. I only took your treatment as harassment. That wasn't my intention. Hey, I haven't been able to reach David or Catherine. Oh, they said they blocked you. Susan, please, tell them to answer my call. I don't want to. I have to go. We should enjoy our trip. Hold on! Susan! You won't get away with this. You'll regret this when you come back from a trip. Susan, there's something I'd like to tell you. I have nothing to say. I already told you yesterday. I'm done with you. I'd like to apologize. For everything I've done. I don't need your apology. I'm going out of my way to apologize to you. Even now, you've always disrespected me. You've always criticized me for being raised in a fatherless family. For not going to college. I want nothing to do with someone like you. That was my fault. But I used to dream of a perfect daughter-in-law. I couldn't help but compare. I've always been excluded from the family since David and I got married. I've been told that I'm not one of the family. That I don't belong in the family because of where I come from. Those are the things you've been telling me, aren't they? Yes, but I will accept you from now on. 
David and Catherine gave me a lecture about my behavior. I regret what I've done. You can regret as much as you want, but it won't change my feelings. I'm making a compromise here. How impudent are you? What more do you want to blame me for? Your behavior like that? I didn't ask for a compromise. You're only apologizing to me because David and Catherine wouldn't talk to you otherwise. Um, no. I feel that my criticism might have crossed the line. Then don't ever judge people based on their educational background or their upbringing. That's all I ask for. I will cut ties with you. Susan, I will accept you as a daughter-in-law. I sincerely apologize for my behavior. So, would you forgive and forget? Let's behave like adults. Conflicts happen between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. No need to be so stubborn. You're not in a position to decide. This isn't just discord between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I've tried my best to win your approval. Now I realized it was unnecessary. I'm saying I recognize your effort now. Why aren't you happy about it? Catherine told me you were planning behind our backs to make David remarry someone else. You've already found a woman to make his new wife. I don't believe a single word coming from someone who plots something like that. I'd be all alone if David and Catherine break off relations with me. There would be no one to take care of the house. Why don't you pass it to one of your relatives? Why would I give away my property to someone in a branch family? I've worked so hard to protect my property. David and Catherine value something else over family property. They left you because of your obsession with money and status. I have nothing more to say to you. David and I will have a happy, peaceful life together. I'm really sorry, Susan. I apologize for everything. So please, don't break off our relations. Please, convince David to change his mind. No, I made up my mind. And so did David. We decided to lead a happy life surrounded with kind people that we love. Diane, who will die alone and miserable? Me or you? After David and Catherine severed their relations with Diane, she shut herself in a large, lonely house. David and Catherine have always felt repulsion towards Diane's obsession with money and status. Diane had been opposed to Catherine's marrying anybody until she married Steve. Catherine was allowed to marry Steve only because he had a career Diane approved of. Catherine said laughing that she would have been single still if she had not met Steve. Diane was devastated by the fact that her own son and daughter left her. A neighbor who ran into Diane said she looked depressed and aged. Nonetheless, David and Catherine said it was good medicine for her. They seem to have no intention of reconnecting with her again. Diane has always looked down on everyone and had no friends. That was probably why she was so attached to her family, but now... Her family gave up on her. She must be having a sad, lonely life alone. I was very happy to go on a trip with my family in the beginning of a new year. I am happy and grateful to be surrounded with a lot of warm-hearted people. To have a supportive husband and a sister-in-law who always cares about me. I will never forget their kindness and will continue to repay them by giving them all the support.